no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome with us this day. I'm at the home of Teresa and Jerry. If one drives from Geneseo to Atkinson or from Atkinson to um, Geneseo, one often passes by their homestead. And as one drives by, one is greeted by yard art. Yard art in all kinds of beautiful, bright colors um, that draws one in. And if one slows down and looks more closely or has the opportunity to walk around, one is just met by piece after piece of art, all of which is built out of junk. Which leads us to the theme for today's message. Um, this is the end of April, and at the end of April, you know that we end up having those special days where we reflect on the earth like Earth Day. We think about trees with Arbor Day, their soil conservation. Um, and those of us in rural America end up seeing fields beginning to prepare for the coming planting. So it's springtime. It's stepping into the earth and reflecting upon the earth. And so today I want to reflect a little bit about conservation, but in the context of yard art. So come with me as we journey and reflect around this garden, this yard, this piece of God's creation. Our Bible opens with several passages from the book of Genesis. We like to refer to them as the creation stories. And I repeat, there's two stories, so it's not just one creation story. And each approaches the act of creation in a slightly different way. And yet there is a similarity. In the first creation story, which is the one we know the best, we experience God's Spirit moving over everything and all being created because God speaks. And there is this emphasis on the goodness of all that comes about. The second creation story has God looking for companionship. And so God creates humankind and humankind gets placed in the garden and all gets created. And there is a goodness also about that. In the second creation story, there is the emphasis on the garden. And in each story, we get this sense about the beauty of all that is. We are reminded about life. We're reminded about God. And we are reminded about the importance of enjoying that in which we are living. But those first chapters of Genesis, which also introduce us to the beauty of this world around us, that the world is not just about humankind, but also maybe about bird kind and um, the wind that blows through the grass around us, the leaves of the, the trees. We're also reminded that human beings have a special place in it that we are called to be caretakers. But then something goes a little bit wrong. And I'm not wanting to go down that route of what all goes wrong, other than to say maybe the main message or focal point with that is reminding us that maybe what goes wrong is that we start to think exclusively about ourselves. And we start to forget that maybe there is an order. Maybe there is a place for all of us. And maybe there is a responsibility for us connecting with others. And maybe it's not all about me. And I think that's part of where we end up starting to think about ecology, soil conservation, earth conservation. It's the reminder that all this, all that you see, 
isn't just about me. It's about us. And when we talk about us, we're talking about humankind, but we're also talking about bird kind, and we're talking about insects, and we're talking about um, the creatures of the earth. We're talking about the whole of creation. One of Jerry's jokes is that they were drilling for water here, and their auger got stuck. And then they tried to drill a second as they were drilling for water, and that got stuck too. So what do you do when you have two augers that are stuck in the ground as you were searching for water? Well, maybe you decorate them with water pumps. Well, we know that story isn't exactly true, and yet it makes for a good story, and here we have two augers decorated with water pumps. Once upon a time, these water pumps were totally junk. And even earlier time, they were one of the most useful implements one could have around the house as it would pump water out. But then as we begin to have electrif electrification and water pumps and um, running water, the need for such pumps went out of existence. And what do you do with an old pump? What do you do with an old faucet? Well, it goes into the junkyard. And so there's a period of time where something like this is actually worthless. Today it might be worth something because there's so few around and people might just be collecting them for souvenir items. But one of the pieces that's true about um, Teresa and Jerry is that um, as they have moved around and in one of his other lives, Jerry often gathered up junk, they would see things and then begin collecting and pulling them out. And they would be a able to find things like this um, at incredibly low prices because everyone was just throwing them away. And they save them because they're not junk. They're worthwhile. And in their case, because there is an artist at the heart of Teresa, she began to see ways of turning them into something beautiful. And because Jerry loves to help create also, he supports and does the pieces around the edges that helps to enable a creation of a piece of art. But I want to step back to that um, creation story. In it, there is a reference to God creating humankind and then granting humankind a, a special place. Sometimes the wording is dominion. Sometimes the wording is caretaker. But in the end, there is this implied caretaker role. And even if you have dominion, if a ruler has dominion over a nation, the realization is that the ruler is not to take care of the ruler himself, herself, themselves entirely. The ruler is to care for the whole. And in the process, they may enjoy parts of it, parts of the fruits of their labor, but they are to care for the whole. And that clearly is the message that is given in that first creation story, that we are to be caretakers of the whole. Um, in the second creation story, where you have the story of Adam and Eve and, and creatures being created out of the earth and presented and named, the sense is that Adam and Eve are to see the creatures of the world as partners. And as they look around the garden, they're supposed to see the garden as a place in which to live, to enjoy, to enjoy the fruits of the earth. So there's a sense of caretaking for the whole. 
the Bible doesn't go a whole lot into ecology or um, caring for the rest of creation in detail. They're just implied lines here and there. In large part because it wasn't a big issue in a different era. Humankind hadn't amassed the amount of power and ability that we have in today's world. And yet there are echoes, there are lines. For instance, we know that in the creation story, you've got that whole sense of the seventh day is about sabbatical. Well, when the Levitical codes get laid out, one of the codes is that every seventh year, the land is to lie fallow. It's to be allowed to rest. And part of the rest is for the earth, for the soil, for other parts of creation, to be able to regain control, to strengthen themselves. Now, when we get into the stories of the New Testament with Jesus of Nazareth, it's, Jesus is much more concerned about human beings and how human beings treat one another and care for each other. And yet he's a man of the earth. We have that passage, consider the lilies of the field, they neither toil nor spin, and yet not even Solomon was clothed as such as these. And if God so clothes the fields and cares for the birds of the air, will not God care for you? So there is that sense of God is caring for and we ought also to care for. You've got that whole tradition of the Psalms about appreciating the, the beauty around. And so even though it's not directly stated, there is the sense of looking around, enjoying, loving, appreciating. And so part of that is about using the resources we have responsibly. And when their lifespan comes to an end, it isn't necessarily about taking a pump like this and just throwing it in the trash or discarding it in some landfill. There might be another use for it. Now, I'm sure some of these early pumps were gathered by Jerry, as he was thinking about selling scrap metal, and the sense of that is taking old metals and restoring it so that it can be used in new products. And then there was the artist eye, who looked at something old and said, ah, with a coat of paint and some cleaning up and carefully placing it in different ways, maybe there's another use, another life. And so, Part of a garden spot gets created. Old augers, which might be thrown away, become posts, part of a garden spot. And I don't know if it's coming through in the sound that you're hearing, but I'm hearing birds all around me. It's part of the garden spot. What captures my eyes when I drive that road from Geneseo to Atkinson is this line of wheels in all kinds of bright colors that's framed with birdhouses in all kinds of bright colors. Teresa and Jerry took these old iron wheels that come from old wagons, old pieces of equipment, the kinds of things that one just throws away. Again, today there might be a different value from a nostalgic historic, but there was a point of time that this was junk. And they began gathering these wheels together, painting them, cleaning them up, 
And then when they had enough, they began to assemble the wheels into geometric patterns, fitting them together. And that's where part of an eye of an artist comes in. You know, how to just sort of place this with this. And you start to end up with, is it a fence row? Yes. Is it a work of art? Absolutely. I appreciate this because this is about taking the junk of the earth and rather than just filling a landfill with it, about creating and bringing together. And so I see these wheels, their colors, accented by houses for birds, their colors. And there really are birds that live in these houses. And if the light allows me, what you'll end up seeing as I walk around to the other side is how the other side is accented with other pieces of junk. To see that other junk, you almost have to look along the top. And you see an old teapot, old shoes, handles from water faucets, the kinds of things, literally, we throw them away. And again, more teapots. They're just cleaned up and placed. This is part of caring for the earth. Allowing our imagination to work. But also, as we allow our imagination to work, we're reminded that what God created isn't meant to be just taken for granted. It's meant to be appreciated, nurtured, and it's not just for one of us, but it really, it's for all of us. And so part of what makes this art also nice is that while it clearly fills the heart and mind of Teresa and Jerry, they also have created it to share with others. Let's care for our creation. Let's create beauty. Let's remember it's not just about me or for one small group of folks, but it's for us, all of us, all of us, and that it's meant to be shared with others loved, appreciated, and in the end, creation is beautiful. This is a piece that fascinates me. Old transistors converted into another piece of art. It's a good time to pray. Gracious God, we give thanks. We give thanks for the creation of this world, for its beauty, for your reminder to enjoy. And there are days we know that it's more difficult to enjoy than others. But help us to open our eyes to see, to appreciate, but also help us to remember and think about the fact that it's not just for one part or one person, but it's for all of us. So we ask for your care on the soil, on the air around us, the water that we drink, the nutrients of the earth, the birds of the air, the insects, and the animals, and yes, our friends, our neighbors, 
and even those we do not know, enfold each one, that life might be enjoyed fully and fully by all. And let us do our part in being caretakers, in giving second lives, third lives, fourth lives. Amen. As we draw our time to a close together and prepare to go forth into the world, let us remember that we are called to be caretakers, to see and appreciate beauty, to love the world, to nurture the world, appreciate, but also as we go forth, let us go forth remembering that God loves you, that God is with you, God's enfolding you, and God will be with you every moment of your life. Amen.